There's been a lot of contention surrounding the mask bylaw that came into effect several weeks ago, and we've been seeing some anti-mask rallies around town, including one that filed into City Hall during the council meeting a couple of weeks ago, and another one on Mayor McGrath Boulevard. Joining us by Skype to speak more on the subject is Lethbridge Mayor Chris Spearman. Mayor Spearman, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us today. I'm happy to be here, Jeanette. Awesome. So with all the mask contention, I think part of the problem is perhaps some people felt that it was done so late in the game. And now that there isn't as many COVID cases in town, they're probably asking why a bylaw now. So what do you tell these people that are so upset? Well, the, the numbers are up and down every week. We were uh, anticipating and preparing for a second wave. The last thing we want is to have businesses in, and our community locked down again. So uh, the idea is, of the mask bylaw is one of a suite of things we should be doing, like physical distancing, uh, washing our hands on a regular basis, using uh, hand sanitizer, making sure that we're taking all the precautions. And uh, we thought um, a mask bylaw would be helpful in the city. What we want to do is protect the uh, people who have immune deficiencies and seniors, of course. And we also want to make sure that people can go into our businesses uh, safely and not risk uh, spreading COVID uh, amongst the population. So uh, the, pur the purpose is to, is to protect people from the spread of COVID and to keep our businesses open and our economy running. Have there been any fines that have been given out so far that have been dished out? No, there haven't. There have not? Nope. The, the purpose is, uh, is education. Okay. Uh, and we want to make sure the community, we want the community to work together. You know, there'll never be a bylaw passed that it has 100% support. Mm. People will say that uh, it's against their democratic rights, but your democratic rights really extend to the next person. So you can't be jeopardizing the physical health of somebody else. So that's the, uh, that's the limit to your democratic rights. And so we're simply asking people uh, to cooperate and uh, we believe that the, our community will be better off for it if we can get through uh, when other, other provinces, other communities are experiencing a second wave, if we can keep our economy open, uh, that'll be tremendous. Speaking to that, if things get worse and more and more people are contentious about it, would the city look at start looking to begin handing out those $100 fines? We're really uh, going to not emphasize the fine side. I think people people want us to go out and start imposing fines because some people aren't wearing masks. That's the last thing we're going to do uh, is create reactions. We want people to cooperate and uh, think about their neighbors and let's have a city that looks after each other. So will the city be looking at extending the face covering by law beyond December? Definitely. Uh, what we will be doing is re-examining the bylaw after December 31st. So it's a temporary bylaw. It expires on December 31st, and the bylaw will be reviewed at the first city council meeting following December 31st. Okay, then. So we were talking about a, a second wave, preparing for that. Uh, with school starting up again, the, the possibility that could be a trigger for it as well. So there were teachers and parents that had concerns. So Mayor Spearman, do you agree that, uh, with the decision to reopen schools in September? Do you think that it was too soon, in your personal opinion? Uh, well... It's not really my responsibility. The decision to open schools was between the school divisions and the Minister of Education. Uh, the province decided to open schools, and of course, uh, they provided all the circumstances under which uh, schools can operate. And I know our school boards and school divisions have really been working hard to make sure that our schools were ready for kids to return to. And they've created various protocols that are really building specific and school specific to make sure kids are safe. So if kids can be returned to school safely, learning in person is the best form of learning. I think there's a lot of parents uh, who are very concerned about kids having to learn at home uh, on video systems and questioning the quality of that learning. So how long can we do that? It's better if uh, kids are in school, in a classroom with a teacher, and if we can do that safely, 
I'm all for it. Hmm. So, Mayor Spearman, you sit on the police commission, which was recently criticized by the police association for upholding a decision to suspend an officer without pay. I think the argument here was that people should be considered innocent until proven guilty, and that in the, the case with LPS, no cop has ever been suspended without pay until they've been proven guilty. So why did the commission decide to go ahead with suspending an officer without pay? Many people don't understand the role of the police commission, and specifically even of uh, city council as it, re as it relates to policing. So we cannot direct the police. All we can do in, in the case is take a look at whether it's reasonable uh, that the police chief recommended a certain course of action. Of action. And uh, if it's reasonable, that's, we're not there to adjudicate the case. That case will be adjudicated later by another body. So we're simply saying, was, was this handled appropriately? And in this case, uh, you know, I hesitate to discuss this much because it is a, an HR matter and a matter that could go, ultimately go before the courts. But the police commission is not the adjudicator. We just simply say, uh, were all the right processes followed under Section 45 of the Police Act by the police chief? That's all. It's required. Keeping on the topic of law enforcement, we recently had another drug house shut down by a scan unit. So are we getting ahead of the drug crisis in our city or do we still have a long way to go? A difficult question for me to answer. I'm not sure. At any one time, we do rely on the police, the data. But uh, my, my gut feeling is that the, the drug problem really hasn't gone away. Uh, the reports from the police to City Council indicate that there are at least 200 hardcore users uh, that have mental health issues, a huge challenge for them to deal with, and uh, additional people. So uh, the closing of the supervised consumption site uh, didn't mean that people left the city. It just meant that they spread, they're spreading out. So we're getting reports of uh, issues in other areas like golf gardens and in uh, community parks elsewhere. Uh, that, that's where people have gravitated to in order to use their drugs. Uh, so people are still addicted. Uh, people haven't gone into recovery and uh, detox or intox. So that's a huge challenge for us, and we're still trying to deal with that problem. Yes. Now, the province says that it's going to set up a drug treatment court in Lethbridge soon, and I know that uh, council had the opportunity to uh, hear a, a a woman come down and talk about it. Can you explain why a drug treatment court would be a good idea? The idea is to give people who are convicted of crimes, either drug use or drug related crimes, an opportunity to go into recovery. So they're given a choice of either going to jail or going into recovery. And it's a very rigorous process. If a, an individual chooses to go into recovery, they're monitored all the time. Uh, they can't use that as an excuse to avoid jail. They have to be genuine about drying out, about going into treatment, going into recovery, and through that whole period, uh, they are monitored. So uh, it's an alternative. If it works, it means that pe fewer people will be using drugs and fewer people will be depending on crime to pay for their drugs. Yeah. Now, Chris, can you give us an update on the intox detox beds in Lethbridge, what the situation there is? The number of detox beds has not changed, so we still have eight beds at the regional hospital. And we've recently uh, created 30 intox beds at the homeless shelter. So that means that uh, the police or uh, any of the services uh, can take people to the intox, and if they're under the influence, they can be cared for, and hopefully uh, people can talk to them, they can access services, and ultimately we want to move those people into treatment and recovery when those services are available. Wonderful. Uh, let's switch gears again and talk about business and, inv and investment. What is the city doing right now to lure more business and investment our way? Well, we have economic development Lethbridge. Uh, city funds that uh, with $800,000 a year to uh, attract businesses to the community, to encourage 
businesses in the community to grow and expand. And uh, we also have Tech Connect, which is operated by EDL, uh, which helps foster startup businesses. So uh, those, are, those are the three components that we've funded for some time. City Council will be bringing forward a suite of six incentive programs to our next City Council meeting. And uh, that City Council meeting in two weeks will look at these uh, different incentive programs and hopefully we'll approve some that will encourage additional investment in the city of Lethbridge and help us cope with uh, post-COVID-19 recovery. Excellent. Okay, so we are in uh, reconciliation week right now. Are there new initiatives from the city as we work towards reconciliation? Well, we are uh, making sure that we try to engage with our Indigenous people. We want to begin a relationship with our Indigenous neighbours, uh, the Blood Tribe Council and other groups. Uh, we want to see how we can work together on many of these problems. Uh, they have the same problems that we have here in the city of Lethbridge, whether it comes to housing, when it comes to drug addiction, when it comes to crime. And uh, if we can work together, maybe uh, we can have greater success. Now, we all know that 2020 has been a crazy and unprecedented year. What do you foresee being the biggest challenges for the city moving forward into 2021? Well, I do think we need to make sure our, our economy is strong. We need to talk positively about our city. We have a beautiful city. Uh, we have many positive things happening in our city. And all too often, uh, the negativism uh, is dominant. We need to say Lethbridge is a great city in which to live and work. And there's great opportunities here. And we all need to be talking positively about our, how our various organizations and employers and everything we do uh, is great for people that live here. We, we want to talk about our quality of life. So uh, those are things, hopefully we can uh, turn the corner on some of our social issues, uh, some of the crime issues, and begin speaking more positively about the city of Lethbridge and how great it is to live here. And with that, it looks like we are out of time. Mayor Chris Spearman, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Jeanette. It's been a pleasure. Look forward to talking to you again next month.